I'm Wendy Rutledge and this is Palm Beach TV, a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association. Here's what is straight ahead on this week's Island News. As the COVID numbers go down, is it safe to gather together to celebrate Passover and Easter? We'll check in with the rabbi. If you're not locking your car doors, you could be the next auto theft target. What you should do to keep you and your vehicle safe. Is the island high tech or low tech? And where should we be headed in terms of access to technology? Our beaches should be pristine, but the very protective PPE we've been encouraged to wear sometimes finds its way to the sand. Plus, round up your baskets, grab your bonnets. It's almost time for the hunt. These stories and much more straight ahead on Palm Beach TV. Spring break is winding down, the spring holidays right around the corner, but can we celebrate the way we used to with our families and friends? In the past week, the number of COVID-19 cases on the island has increased by 15 to a total of 568 cases and 12 deaths. With more and more people finally able to get the vaccine, the spread of the virus is declining which, according to Rabbi Shiner of the Palm Beach Synagogue, means this year's Passover Seder will be a little more family-friendly than last year. So many people were alone last year, Passover. People couldn't be with their own children and grandchildren physically. Well, thank God this year we're in a much better place. So, for example, at the Palm Beach Synagogue, we're having outdoor Passover Seder. Now, I've been a rabbi at the Palm Beach Synagogue for 26 years. We've never had an outdoor Passover. I'm a little excited about it. Passover under the stars. Reservations are required. Just go to palmbeachsynagogue.org for more information. About the time the undergrounding project was just started about five years ago, there was a simultaneous push to also add fiber optic cable to the wires being buried underground. But that never happened. There was a big push to investigate whether we wanted a spare conduit to put fiber townwide from North uh, Inlet to all the way to uh, South Palm Beach. The town even put out an extensive survey asking residents whether they were in favor of adding fiber optic lines to the electrical lines being buried in the undergrounding project. But with very little citizen support, the fiber optic option died. However, as Palm Beach Civic Association Director Harvey Papel points out, there is a hybrid, sort of second best version available. We are going to be getting, with undergrounding, we are going to be getting uh, uh, a broadband connections through uh, fiber backbones with Comcast and AT&T. Comcast, what they're installing is what they call a hybrid system. So is fiber to the node which means it's fiber to a point that's close to your home, and then it's coax from that node to your home. And there's a benefit to that because if they brought fiber to your home, you would have to change your wiring in your home. Meantime, what about 5G? The latest and greatest innovation meant to deliver faster, more reliable internet. It is not what is being broadcast on television as advertised. It just doesn't exist. And if you look at your cell phone, you may see a 5G up there. Not the case. So the fact that I was persuaded to buy the 5G version of an iPhone means it's, it's capable of going 5G, but the delivery of the 5G isn't happening. That is correct. We don't have the infrastructure on the island to support the towers that would be necessary for 5G. So we have a limited hybrid type of fiber optic broadband service offered and no 5G at all. Where does that put the island of Palm Beach in terms of high tech versus low tech? The answer with regard to high tech and low tech is probably someplace in the middle of that. Well, while we do not have presently good cellular co coverage throughout the island itself, it's a result of the town itself not allowing 
for cellular towers to be built. With high-tech services somewhere in the middle on the island, still, they're better than they used to be. You've got a hybrid fiber to a certain point, and they say that gives you at least a gig service if that's what you want. So it's a, it's, they say it's much improved. Meantime, the Palm Beach Port Commission is now opting for a low-impact method of managing Peanut Island. Peanut Island is the popular island situated just off the north end of Palm Beach Island. Peanut Island is a favorite for boaters and picnickers and home to the historically significant Kennedy Bunker, built as a nuclear bomb shelter for JFK in 1961. Karen Marcus, who has long advocated for a low-impact, protective approach to managing who and what goes on at Peanut Island, says the Port Commission's unanimous vote to keep Palm Beach County as the overseer means big development projects will not be approved. They're not going to change the uses. Uh, we restricted those uses many years ago so that it couldn't have commercial activity, so there couldn't be a restaurant there. Um, um, so those types of uses. So it'll be more educational and historical. Do you love your car? Do you want to protect it from what seems to be an ever increasing threat of auto theft? Here's what you need to know. According to FBI statistics, a car is stolen every 33 seconds in the United States. That amounts to a loss of about $6.4 billion. The majority of those stolen vehicles never to be recovered. To safeguard your car from being stolen, here is the advice of Palm Beach Police. What we want you to do is park in a well-lit area. Make sure you lock your doors. Take your valuables out of the car. Most vehicles now have a security system in them already coming from the factory. Add another one, add a GPS to your car. So if, God forbid, someone takes the car, we can track it down. You can follow it from your phone. Something else we all want to protect is our beaches, of course. It turns out that the mask fatigue that we've all been hearing a lot about is evident along our shoreline. And we're not talking about wearing these, we're talking about tossing them. Meant to be found on faces, these discarded masks are now found strewn along our beaches. That's not all. Caps are another huge um, abundant item that we find. This guy, I want to find the guy that uses these. It's the tip of a cigarillo or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Most of it, some form of plastic. Diane and her crew from Friends of Palm Beach find literally tons of plastic trash strewn amidst the washed up seaweed. Just last year, bagging over 34,000 pounds or 17 tons of plastic junk. I've been walking along with Diane for about five minutes and already this giant plastic bag is about a quarter full. Five minutes worth of cleanup on the beach. A real uptick in medical waste, even more disturbing. You'll walk past a diabetic lancet thinking it's just a microplastic, but it's an inch long piece with a little pointy part of it that the diabetic uses to test their blood. And these, they're all along here. So where is it all coming from? Diane and students from Palm Beach Atlantic University are determined to find out. With a new study involving the placement of trackable cards along the shorelines of many of the island nations to our east, strong currents like the Gulf Stream, along with easterly winds, bring their waste to our shores. And here's where you come in. At some point, I might be walking this beach and pick up one of these cards. Yes. Okay. What would that tell you and the study? So the, each card has a um, number on it, and they know where they deployed it from. So it's going to let them know uh, winds. They have the winds, they have the currents, they have the dates of when it was deployed. And they've already been receiving calls on cards from when they deployed it on the 15th. I'm happy for you about the study, but I am appalled at the amount of trash yeah we are looking at. All of this plastic degrading to microplastics ingested by fish and killing them or winding up in the seafood we humans are consuming. The tracking study hopefully bringing answers to the question of who and where all this garbage is coming from. So this process now is find out who the offenders are and the next step is accountability. Yes, to take responsibility. 
The ocean is a central focus of this year's final Global Speaker Series presentation, hosted by the Palm Beach Civic Association and sponsored by First Republic Bank. In this enlightening presentation by Rutgers University oceanographer Dr. Josh Kohut, he shares information about the vital role of our oceans and new robotic methods of studying these vast bodies of water. Uh, this is an animation from NASA. Uh, that shows that it's not just one big body of blue water, uh, but there's sphere. So the weather that we experience is tightly coupled with the energy and the features of our oceans. You can see this intricate network of currents. You can see the Florida current that's running right up past you on the east coast of Florida. Well, that has extension all the way up the east coast across the ocean to Europe, and it's delivering things like heat uh, and nutrients uh, to these different areas. Getting that all-important COVID-19 vaccine is not an easy task, especially if you're not comfortable around computers. But a group of volunteers is helping people go through this process that can be confusing and tedious. I imagine the frustration when you're not computer literate. You're not comfortable. That isn't the way you communicate. And that is the only way to get the vaccine. Well, we are blessed with a lot of volunteers and people willing to help others. And it's not just to register, as you're absolutely correct that a lot of people were just at a loss. And some of our senior citizens still are. And that's why it's wonderful that we're doing this so they know that we're available as a resource. But some of them are also incapacitated. And so one of the other things that we've offered and provided when, when needed uh, is not only getting a appointment for a vaccine, but helping that person get to the location and then taking them back home. It's time for our wow segment that is Word on Wellness. And this week, it's all about those spring holidays we've been talking about. On Saturday, April 3rd, the Rec Center is going to be hosting its annual spring celebration. It's a wonderful event for families with children ages 5 to 11. I'm at the Rec Center with Lauren Bayard and she's going to tell us a little bit about the event. The field behind us will be covered with eggs and filled with candy and as well as some golden tickets. Those golden tickets can be returned for a prize at the end and the field will be divided into two age groups and three COVID safe time slots. To register, please email recreation at townofpalmbeach.com or click the link below. You can see our information at palmbeachrecreation.com. Come out and join us. We're excited to have some fun. <laughs> That's it for this week's news. Thank you for watching. If you are not a member of the Palm Beach Civic Association, we hope you will join us. If you are a member, please renew. So we will see you next week on Palm Beach TV, a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association, where membership matters.